Hi, and welcome to The Language Lie. A podcast about idioms. I'm Ingrid. I'm Casey. I'm Itch. <laughs> cool. I was going to ask how you're doing, but that sounds like a good way to be. <laughs> Itch, itchy. Yeah, cool. I'm great. I'm itchy. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. We've entered summer here in Texas. I think we can finally say we got through the door of summer. So we're just going to be itchy and irritable from here on out. Cool. Cool. Until November. That's, that's our update. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so I got an idiom for you today, Casey. Cool. As you laughingly texted me earlier and said, it's your turn to research. Ha 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 ha. Like my yeah. huge punishment. But I actually had a really good time. So cool. our idiom today is all hat, no cattle. All hat, no cattle. This is funny. <laughs> this is very Texas of you. It's very Texas. Um, as a woman not from Texas, I must say that I had never ever heard of this before until a friend suggested it as something to research for this podcast. And then I started thinking about it. And perhaps I've heard it over the years, but this is seems like a really Texas idiom. What do you think as a northerner? I think it's probably any like state where there's cowboys. Aren't there cowboys everywhere? Delaware? <laughs> all those Florida? All those Vermont cowboys? Yeah, I mean maybe, sure. But I'm well, thinking like the big cowboy states. Yeah. The big I open feel plain states. The, yeah, there's a lot of them that aren't Texas and we get this like reputation for cattle raising, but or you know whatever but it's bigger in wyoming i don't know we we don't even have a chat about cowboys or cattle <laughs> but uh do you know what this means casey all hat no cattle is that what it is mm -hmm. uh i would assume it's like the boots don't make the man or whatever that that one is um of like uh, pretending to be something that you aren't mm. by flashy means or by accessorizing <laughs> <laughs> in cowboy attire or or whatever that is whatever version of that is for the the situation i um, like it i feel like we get a lot of all hat no cattle here in austin texas oh my yes yeah now that south congress yes. is a shopping mall oh an upscale my. shopping mall gosh with that the... hat shop oh in south congress I was once at a restaurant for a friend's birthday and we were all just sitting there like having a good time. And I look, look over and there's this couple that was clearly visiting and Instagramming, oh, Instagramming no. couple, no. right? They oh, I hate these... them. I hate them so much. <laughs> they had these huge hats, like huge giant hats. Cowboy hats uh, or like the Wilco hat, the... Uh, whatever that... that hat shop on south congress mm -hmm. has. we won't I think they, we won't they were more it. like the yeah whatever anyway it was back and forth of them taking pictures of each other full flash uh with these giant hats oh, on that no one wears no one no, wears them. no <laughs> except I cannot, for tourists i can't tell you the number of times i've actually had this conversation with various austin friends talking about being irritated with that couple in a restaurant yeah. taking pictures of themselves for their instagram yeah. when they are clearly here from that like no one who lives in this entire state would do that i don't think yeah. pretty sure even uh, people from dallas wouldn't do that i had a friend i was telling a friend the story not to take over this episode but no please um, <laughs> this is now a I... podcast where we complain about people <laughs> visiting austin every third episode we talk about <laughs> uh and he's well he was saying that i should have videotaped it because it went on i'm not even kidding 20 minutes of this with like oh, flash God. right yeah. in a nice restaurant and um he said i should have videotaped it and then found out who they were and <laughs> tagged, them. tagged them like this is what you look like to other people <laughs> yeah. i just need you to know that would have been great. What restaurant yeah. was it? Just Eberly. Oh Eberly? yeah, Walmart. that is a very annoying place to be taking pictures of yourself. It's like just like in a hat, dark and like 
cocktail-y. And... Mm-hmm. Also, anyway, if, my, if my grandpa had been there, he would have walked over to both those people and slapped the hats off their heads and been like, <laughs> you are in a proper restaurant. Take off your hat. Oh, oh yeah, you don't wear a hat no. in a restaurant. Absolutely, you don't. Hmm. Nobody has any manners. Great. We're done. That's all we needed all right. to say. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, email us if you want to yeah. talk about anything else. If you want to complain about any sort of modern uh, atrocities, all hat and no cattle. This is from phrases.org.uk. They say that it's an American expression referring to someone who is all talk but no action. It is also used to describe someone who presents the appearance of something that they aren't. So feel like, again, we get a lot of this in Austin, downtown people with their cowboy hats who've never been around a cow. Not saying I have, but. You're not wearing a cowboy hat. I'm not wearing a cowboy hat. I don't own one. Um, They go on to say uh, that this sounds American, specifically in the Southern states, American, and that's exactly what it is. The origin is that, It's a later variant of the original saying, big hat, no cattle. Hmm. The allusion's clearly to a 10-gallon hat, which is the oversized form of a Stetson cowboy hat. I almost went down a lot of rabbit holes about different kinds of cowboy hats and what they're called, because that was, this is really interesting. The hats came into use in 1925, although even the largest held nothing like 10 gallons of water. A city slicker wanting to pass themselves off as a rough, tough cowboy might wear the hat, but lay themselves open to the taunt, big hat, no cattle. I think we should start calling people city slickers more personally. Okay. That seems discriminatory, but okay. (laughs) They also say it's discriminatory to city people. It just seems, uh, why why do you have to segment them like that? It's okay. Well, people live yeah. in cities they do it's true i guess they're fine as long as they're not trying to pass themselves off as a cowboy live in a city all you want just just own it own who you are just in general it's a great rule for life cool um many people associate this phrase with texas which is understandable for a phrase that con- connects cattle and bigness both closely linked with this state um but they also Um, cite an Osage Native American tribe in some phrases, which originated in Kentucky. Hmm. The present the same the same term, the same variation of the term, the big hat. There are some earlier um, mentions. I uh, so that sorry. There's no, it's okay. They give an an example from the Oklahoma News, which is kind of convoluted, and I wasn't going to read it, but I will. Seek a clarifying amendment, Mr. President, praise Mrs. Dorothy Thompson. In the mutual stately sayonaras of distinguished columnists, the only holy kiss ever offered this this celebrant by Mrs. Thompson was Frankenstein monster in Big Wind. The Osages say it better, big hat, no cattle. Hmm. That's referring to the Osage Native Americans. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Uh, The later early example... The latter half of the 20th century, you find this in the Texas connection found in a Tennessee newspaper in July, 1977. The quote being, this man pestered the hell out of me a while back, said he wanted to come to Chicago to meet me. That was three months ago and I only saw him that one time. He's a Texan, that's all. Big hat and no cattle. So I think this is disparaging all Texans. Um. In a similar vein, we go on to find, I found this from the dailymeal.com. It's an article entitled 10 Things Only People in Texas Say. Hmm. They say this is a traditional Texas put down. Uh, You can say all hat, no cattle or big hat, no cattle. And it refers Hmm. to someone who's all talk, no action, power of substance behind his words. Former Texas governor Ann Richards famously used this phrase to describe President George W. Bush. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's two there's two definitions, two slight differences in definition. It's all talk, no action, mm-hmm. and then being something that you're pretending to be something that you're not. Yes. Okay, cool. Sorry. Or like no having no power behind your words. Got it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's where it comes from. And there's a, I found various cultural references. 
is a 2013 album by Chris Shiflett and the Dead Peasants, which I just wanted to cite because he oh, was my... the lead guitarist for the Foo Fighters. Did you know this? No, also the Dead Peasants? Mm-hmm. That or was the name of his band. <laughs> it's not Peasants. It's not the Dead wow. Peasants. Both are dark. <laughs> um one's a little bit more dark can we just <laughs> yes that's true there's also a song by the sweet tea trio which was a pretty rousing country ballad but what the most common one i found is from a song and i am gonna send you these oh, lyrics cool. right now mr divine cool because it's too good to pass up oh it's a lot <laughs> I just actually wanted to make you say these things. See that boy standing there by the dance floor? He's looking like a marble man. Starch shirt, starch jeans. He starches the jeans. Big trophy buckle and an empty Copenhagen can. He's talking cowboy this and cowboy that. Well, I bet one thing's for sure. The only stampede that he's ever seen is the clearance of the Western store. That was just so great. I had to make you read that part. <laughs> All hat and no cattle. That boy just ain't real. All boots and no saddle. Don't know how to make a cowgirl feel. <laughs> Think I'm going to tell him to pack up his act and go back to where he came from. Because all hat, no cattle. Ain't going to get it done. There are mm -hmm. no rhyming words in the last three nope. lines of that. Mm -mm. It goes on to get dirtier, but I didn't want to shock our younger oh, wow. listeners. It was, it was, it was, I was like, me. isn't country music supposed to be, you know, real pure? And I don't know. I mean, I don't know any country music. So apparently I've been proven wrong. It's by Trace Adkins. I think I put no, it. No, I think country music could be whatever you want it to be. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously anything can be whatever we want it to be. I have an impression as a person who doesn't listen to a lot of country music that it's real like salt of the earth. But I guess that can be plenty dirty. I think old country music yeah. is more that. Yeah. Uh, I heard of it all. I also in phrases.org.uk, I just wanted to mention this because I found it super fun. They say that this is similar to the phrase all mouth and no no trousers, which is a British expression. And that means loud mouthed and boastful, but lacking in substance. But it can, uh, you can also say to be all mouth and trousers, and that's to be loud, boastful, and forward in a sexually charged way. And I think we should all just endeavor to be a little bit more like that. All mouth and trousers. Okay. I didn't want to go too far into the British one because that's a whole separate episode, but I thought it was fun that they have a weird. Mm, cool. So all mouth, no trousers means the same thing that we talk, talked about. Yes. All but mouth when you take in yes. trousers means that it's like forward. Sexually forward. Yes. Okay, well, I was trying to not say that oh. S word. Or, God forbid. God uh, forbid. <laughs> so there we have it. Cute cool. little fun southern idiom uh all right well i have an international idiom just great for you our to our international listeners we wanted to present you this all hat no cattle because all things texan are trendy in europe always it's like texas steakhouses over there texas taco bars so now you can say all hat no cattle and have a fun salty little flavor to your language Oh, there was a Five Guys in Barcelona. <laughs> made me laugh. Is that a burger <laughs> place? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you go? No, of course not. Okay. Um, I just texted you something. Cool. And I'm going to need you to read it out loud to our listeners. Great. Why do you... I guess I made you read that thing about the Marlboro Man. Jit mile butter by die fich. One more time, I couldn't hear you. Jet <laughs> mal butter by die fich. So this is a German idiom. Uh, okay. I kind of chose it because I know how much you like butter. I love butter. Um, mm -hmm. Translated literally, uh, whatever you just said 
in your best German. I didn't know it was German. I can try to do it again in a German accent, but it won't probably No, be no, I think better. it's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it means now butter for the fish. And that means to get to the point already. Wow, that I don't understand how those things go together at all, but Me butter for the fish. Neither. Now butter for the fish. I don't think that we should give fish butter, but now I want to. I think it's like you're putting the butter on the cooked fish. Oh god. I don't know. Oh, no. I that, now I'm now I'm sad. Yeah. Huh. Well, I like it. Thanks for finding that one, Casey. Oh, tr truly a pleasure. <laughs> All right. Well, if you have any idioms you would like for us to research, if you know an international idiom and you would like to give us a little audio for that, you can email us at thelanguagelie at gmail.com. Or slide into our DMs at thelanguagelie on Instagram, Facebook, and now on YouTube with closed captioning mm -hmm. for any listeners uh, that need closed captioning to yep. understand what the heck we're saying <laughs> many of you may yes. uh yeah go over there and subscribe to that channel you can just search the language lie uh you can also go to our patreon patreon.com forward slash language lie thanks for listening guys take care bye